Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's your old buddy, the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. Coming to you live to tape, 25 feet below the surface of the earth. Here at Chaos Corner, interrupted by the wild sounds of nature. We go through this every time. Alexa, lower the volume. There's a lot of birds around here at Chaos Corner. Fans, another edition today of this date, today in pro wrestling history, October 23rd. Thanks for being here on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel. Follow me on all social media platforms. You know what they are. Twitter, AKX, at Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. On Instagram, it's the Guardian of Chaos. On Facebook, I have two accounts. That's right, there's two. Jay Brony and Protigio Fidelis El Guardian. Follow me on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, and Zoom. Coming to you live on Rumble. You're not going to want to miss it. Let's get right down to brass tacks because I have a lot of news and notes here on today in pro wrestling history. I don't want any distractions from all the sounds I have to whisper or Alexa will start all over again. This is what happens when you're one man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog. No Patreon, no pay chats, no super chats, no paywall, no Venmo, no Zelle, none of that BS. You get me, the GOC, for free. Big shout out. In recognition to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without him, none of this would be possible, especially in today's day and age in 2023 and what's going on. Fans, we're close. Get right with the big man because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. And I mean that. That's a shoot. Walk in faith, not fear, because if he's for us, nobody else can be against us. And we know who wins in the end. So come on back. I'm jumping off all the other social media platforms to meet me back on here, Guardian of Chaos, the Mothership, the YouTube channel. We're coming up on 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 watch hours. We will be going live here on YouTube. I want to earn it. Freeze upping the litter game by providing odor control with simple cleanup. Liquid goes Kitty the litter again? Stays on top for easy scooping. You see what happens when there's no editing and no bells and whistles and you bring it from the bunker live. Ever since our family Alexa, near play tropical thunderstorm sounds. That's always my go-to. Let's see what happens here. We're back, fans, on Chaos Corner. I apologize. We go through this every day. It's kind of like a live to tape. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. I am live, but I am taping this. Is, this is the same thing here with the electronics, which I don't trust any of it. Big tech, big pharma, uh, government, uh, health, uh, we know what's going on and all the atrocities, but I'm here as a stress reliever for myself and for you guys. So let's hop right into it here. Let's jump into the time machine here on Chaos Corner. We might bounce all over the place. I did so much research last night into this morning. I'm not going to give you the old sources joke, uh, although it is true. All right, fans. Again, thanks for being here from the bottom of my heart. Stay close to your family and friends because nothing is guaranteed. Not today, not tomorrow. Head on a swivel, situational awareness in today's world. So let me get off that. I, I belabored the point too much. Let's get on to some history. Some fun here with your old buddy. And, and thanks for watching. October 23rd, 1940. Yvonne Robert defeats Lou Fez for the Montreal heavyweight title, beginning Robert's fifth reign. October 23rd, 1945. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch publishes an article noting that former sports writer Sam Mushnick will be acquiring a promoter's license for pro boxing and pro wrestling. Let's not forget, Mushnick in the St. Louis area went on to be a huge part, a nucleus, if you will, of the NWA. 
back in the 40s, into the 50s, into the 60s. October 23rd, 1956. Junzo Yoshinosato defeats Isayo Yoshiwara in a tournament final to become the first Japanese light heavyweight champion in Tokyo, Japan. Konnichiwa, bitches. Uh, it's me. It's Gio-san. Say that again. Jun Junzo Yoshinosato and Isawa Yoshiwara. Not bad for a guy gene. October 23rd, 1956. Let's stay in 1956. Ben and Mike Sharp defeat Bill and Ed Miller to win the San Francisco version of the NWA World Tag Team titles for the 12th of 18 reigns for Ben and Mike Sharp. Let that sink in. Let that marinate. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, as I always say. October 23rd, 1958. Ronnie Etchison and Buddy Rogers win the San Francisco version of the NWA World Tag Team titles from Gene Dubuque and Mike Valentino in Oakland, California. Back into the time machine here at Chaos Corner. October 23rd, 1958. I think I already said that. Octo Wait, let's get the notes together. We're going to bounce all over the place here. October 23rd, 1963. A great year, 1963. Mikey Sharp, a.k.a. Mickey Sharp, defeats Celento Rodriguez for the NWA Gulf Coast heavyweight title in Mobile, Alabama. October 23rd, 1965. Kurt and Skull von Stroheim beat Sam Steamboat and Ron Etchison for the Florida version of the NWA World Tag Team titles in Tampa, Florida. Stand by, fans. We have a lot of news and notes in history here on October 23rd. Uh, oh, by the way, it is Monday, October 23rd. Uh, greetings and salutations. Let's have a good week. October 23rd, 1967. The Sheik defeats Gino Brito to win the vacant Montreal International Heavyweight title. Also, October 23, 1967, Abdullah the Butcher and Dr. Jerry Graham defeat Chris and John Tolos for the Vancouver version of the NWA Canadian Tag Team titles and Vancouver British Columbia British Columbia, Canada. Some great names, some great legends, some great history here on Chaos Corner. I, I can't tell you guys how much I enjoy bringing this to you on a daily basis. No time permitting, obviously. Let's stay in 1967, October 23rd. Spoiler number one and Gary Hart defeat Brute Bernard and Mike Podiosis, let's, let's say that again, Mike Podosis, Podosis, I think he was Greek, to win the NWA American Tag Team titles in Fort Worth, Texas. Back into the time machine. October 23rd, 1970, Pantera Negra defeats Dale Lewis in Los Angeles for the NWA United National Heavyweight title. All territories back in the day, fans. Something that's missing today in 2023. Although with all the independents all over the place, it's kind of becoming like the territories all over again, which would be a great thing. Let that sink in. And I do believe that would be unbelievable, as you can see by the history here. Let's stay in October 23rd, 1970, on this day in pro wrestling history. The AWA in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The AWA World Tag Team Champions, Mad Dog and Butcher Vachon, defeat The Crusher and Bull Bolinski. On that same card, Edouard Carpentier defeats Stan Kowalski. Also on that card in 1970 for the AWA in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Pepper Gomez and Paul Diamond wrestled to a draw. And on that same card, October 23rd, 1970, 
Bo Belinsky defeats Larry Henning in an arm wrestling match. Now you remember, as we fast forward here in the time machine, when uh, the legendary superstar Billy Graham and Ivan Putski had those series of arm wrestling bouts back in the 70s. It truly was unbelievable. And there's many others that had arm wrestling. But these are the early days on this date in pro wrestling history. October 23rd, 1971, we'll stay with the AWA in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Here's the card for that date. For today, October 23rd in history. Nick Bockwinkel goes over on Red Bastine. Ray Stevens defeats Dr. X by disqualification. Billy Robinson goes over on Larry the Axe Hennig. Ivan Koloff, the Russian Bear, defeats Bull Bolinsky. And the magnificent The Rock, but not at that point, John Morocco defeats Mark Starr October 23rd, 1971 on this date in pro wrestling history. Fans, you have to do your due diligence. You have to have your notes because you want to put out accurate information. And even when you research it, you don't always know your sources if their information is accurate. So you have to check and double check. That's what it takes to put out this show every day. I want you fans to know it's, it's not easy, but it's certainly enjoyable. October 23rd, 1978. Kendo Kimura and Hiro Sasaki defeat Jose Rivera in Invader No. 1 for the WWC Tag Team Titles in Caguas, Puerto Rico. No offense, man. I'm just trying to get with the times and relate to all my fans in several different languages. October 23rd, 1980. Bob Brown defeats Mike George to win the NWA Central States heavyweight title in Kansas City, Kansas. This would be Bulldog Bob Brown's 12th reign for the NWA Central States uh, heavyweight title. October 23rd, 1981, Olympic strongman Ken Patera defeats Jack Briscoe for the Missouri heavyweight title in St. Louis. Ending Briscoe's second title reign as the Missouri champion and beginning Patera's second reign as the Missouri heavyweight champion. Let's stay on October 23rd, 1981. Enrique Vera defeats Dos Caras and Kanik in a three-man tournament to win the vacant UWA world heavyweight title. October 23rd, on this date in history, 1985. John Cortez defeats Johnny Saint to win the British World Lightweight title. Back into the time machine, fans. October 23rd, 1988. Jerry the King Lawler defeats Kerry Von Erich for the World Class Heavyweight title in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, if you remember, USWA, WCCW, Merged there for a little bit around this time. Uh, truly was uh, good times in the world of pro wrestling. October 23rd, 1989. The Soul Taker defeats Jerry the King Lawler for the USWA Unified title in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's hop back into the time machine here on Chaos Corner. October 23rd, 1992. Black Bart and Johnny Mantell defeat the Ebony Express to win the GWF, the Global Wrestling Federation, tag team titles in Dallas, Texas. Who was the Ebony Experience? Think about it for a minute. Leave a comment. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Say something. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller, the Ebony Experience was none other than Stevie Ray and Booker T. They went on to be Harlem Heat. 
Let's see what else we have here, fans. We don't want to get too crazy. We're going to go back into the time machine. Jump back to October 23rd, 1967. Let me just make sure that we have everything here that we went over. You remember what Bully Ray said to me from Busted Open Radio, perhaps one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Two-time Hall of Famer. I say it every time, and I know I'm repeating myself, and it's on almost every episode and every show. If you're a fan of mine and a subscriber to this channel, give the Guardian of Chaos Big Daddy five spots. He'll fuck up for him. I consider that to be a compliment coming from Bully Ray. Just making sure that we get our news and notes here in order because I went all over the place with the news and notes trying to research to become accurate for you guys and gals. We got the analytics show coming up very soon, the breakdown and the demographics and different age groups uh, here for Guardian of Chaos on the YouTube channel coming up on near a half million views. All right, so I think we covered that part of this date in pro wrestling history. Let's move on, fans. Let, let's move on. Make sure I got everything. We talked about Bob Brown, Ken Patera, John Cortez, Jerry King Lawler, The Soul Taker, Black Bart. Let's move on. October 23rd, 1996. Carlito Colon, Carlos Colon, wins his 20th WWC World Wrestling Council Universal Heavyweight title by official decision... From Hurricane Castillo Jr. October 23rd, 1988, Halcon Negro Jr. defeats Olympico for the CMLL World Welterweight title in Mexico City, Mexico. Back into the time machine, fans. October 23rd, 1999, Kenta Kobashi and Juan Akayama win their second all Japan Pro Wrestling World Tag Team titles by defeating Misawa and Ogawa in Nagoya, Japan. Let that marry. Ah, ah, ah. I'm not sure if I covered this one, but we will start off with this one. Let me go back to the notes, just in case I missed this. October 23rd, 1974, Nashville, Tennessee, as we hop back into the time machine, Robert Fuller defeats Jerry the King Lawler to win the NWA Southern Heavyweight title. We had to throw that one in there because we certainly don't want to miss anything here. We don't want to miss anything. That's for dang sure. Okay, let's continue on this date in pro wrestling history. Uh, fans, thanks for being here. October 23rd. got to be hydrated. Just got back from the gym. Did a little chest tries and buys. Yesterday I did my cardio. Went into the hydro massage bed. Well, let me tell you something. That really is unbelievable. Had my cup of coffee. Just had a beautiful bowl of oatmeal with cinnamon. Does it get much better than that? I don't think so. So I have to hydrate. Did you know I have to hydrate? Have the hydro boost in here as well. I don't mean to cover up this uh, incredibly handsome face. Let's get back to this date in pro wrestling history, October 23rd, 1994. WCW presents Halloween Havoc, seeing that we are on the precipice. Not only of the big 6-0 for the GOC, Halloween is right around the corner. From Detroit, Michigan to Joe Lowe's Arena. Here's the results. Hacksaw Jim Duggan retains the WCW United States title by defeating, at that point, not Stone Cold, but stunning Steve Austin by disqualification, and obviously that's why he retained the belt. In the main event on that WCW Halloween Havoc 1994, it was a career versus career steel cage match. WCW World Heavyweight Champion, the Incredible, the Immortal, whatever you want to call him, Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair, the Nature Boy, woo, 
in which Hogan wins via the pinfall. Mr. T was the special enforcer and Flair was forced to retire. Mr. T, Hulk Hogan, back to the 80s of rock and wrestling in the WWF and on MTV. It's funny how T was able to hang around and be a part of the pro wrestling business industry, if you will, and never really trained. He was a bouncer, a tough man, you know, the A-team, I get it. Which obviously, when it comes to Flair's retirement, this was a gimmick match. He obviously didn't retire, and that certainly wasn't uh, his last bout. Also on that card, October 23rd, 1994, WCW Halloween Havoc. Head trainer from Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, my home company, Pretty Paul Roma and Paul Orndorff, known as Pretty Wonderful, beat Stars and Stripes, a.k.a. the Patriot and Buff Bagwell, to win the WCW World Tag Team titles. How about that? Congratulations, Roma. I know you're watching. And besides you, all you other fans and folks and haters and goop geens and gooks and greeks and geeks, whatever the fuck I'm trying to say, I know that you know, and you know that I know that you're watching. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have near a half million views. Let that marinate. October 23rd, 1995, on an episode of Raw, Monday Night Raw, Alundra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa Michelli, beat Bertha Faye to win the WWF Women's Championship. A few months later, Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, would turn up on the rival show, this was during the Monday Night Wars, WCW Nitro, and throw the WWF women's belt into the trash. You guys remember all that on live TV. The WWF title was deemed inactive until 1998 after that. So from 95 to 98, because of what happened by Alundra Medusa, one of the greatest women's wrestlers in the history of pro wrestling, the title went inactive from 95 to 98. How many of you knew that? If you don't, you know it now. October 23rd, 1995. Grandmaster Sexay, a.k.a. Brian Lawler, a.k.a. Brian Christopher, beats Jesse James Armstrong. Isn't that the D-O-double-G? Uh if I'm not mistaken, to win the USWA Southern Heavyweight title. Now, that was Brian Christopher's 19th run as the USWA Southern Heavyweight Champion. Think about that. And here's another one that hits home. October 23rd, 2000. Rodney Anawai, a.k.a. Yokozuna, and at that point, a close personal friend of mine passed away in Liverpool, England at the age of 34. Rest in peace, Yoko. You always treated me great. Let's just briefly run uh, through Yoko's career. Obviously a part of the legendary bloodline, the even more legendary Samoan dynasty. He was a Royal Rumble winner two-time WWF Tag Team Champion, a two-time WWF World Heavyweight Champion. He was inducted into the WWF Hall of Fame in 2012 by his cousins, the Usos. And on that note, bear with me and stand by for a second here on this date in pro wrestling history because I have something very pertinent down here in Chaos Corner when it comes to my longtime friend Yokozuna who was a foe and a friend against me as my managerial career across the ring and under my tutelage as well. Stand by and don't forget the infamous video of myself, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, 
Julio De Niro Sanchez against Yokozuna and Jake the Snake Roberts, where I took the 600-pound leg drop and the clothesline from Yoko, and Jake the Snake threw the python on yours truly. It's on the channel. It's on the video. Stand by. Don't go anywhere. We're not done yet. I just want to bring some memorabilia for this date in history and my friend Yokozuna. Stand by. Give you a little introspective into Chaos Corner as we are live here. Something that I want to bring to you guys that's very valuable to me personally. Thanks for putting up with the fans, and I will bring you a closer look. This was from an event in 2000, almost 24 years ago. Now, as I said on this date in pro wrestling history, October 23rd, 2000 is when Rodney, a.k.a. Yoko, passed away. In an event that we were all together where I got smashed with this table and was lucky enough to have myself and the fellow talent sign this. You could see from ECW, the Baldies, and from WWF, Tony DeVito. Of course, my signature, which uh, is kind of like a fifth grader, Big Daddy. You can see the dates on there, 2000. My old buddy, the Jackmaster, John Diamond. And of course, the sexiest man alive who ran the MWA in the House of Pain Pro Wrestling Dojo. Assault Championship Wrestling, Acid Pro Wrestling, and he's coming back and he's active now and is running shows. Jason Knight, and you can see the signature from 2000. And the most important one, Yokozuna, two-time WWF champion, signed by my old buddy Yoko from the BSK. It doesn't get much better than that. So to have this piece of memorabilia for me personally is priceless with his name, my name, the same year that he passed away. Also, many names from the stars on the front of this. If I could read them off, again, this is almost 24 years old. Many names, many stars, a lot of talent on here really means a lot to me and this is why I still have it. If you can see the front a little darker end of the table with all the different signatures on there. I'm not sure if you can make them out. So just to bring you fans and again rest in peace my brother. The year Yoko passed away. I'm truly grateful, humbled and honored by this and to perform with Yoko over the years back then. Thank you for uh, indulging me, pro wrestling fans, IWC, and folks here on Chaos Corner. You don't get this on any other podcast, any other reality show, what you get here with me on this channel. And that's why if you're not subscribing, you're not liking, sharing, commenting, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. And I don't know what the fuck you're doing. And I don't mean to, to cuss, and I apologize for that. Get your heads out of your ass and come to the channel where you get the best entertainment for free in the entire IWC. Back into the time machine here on Chaos Corner. October 23rd. 2004, CM Punk defeats AJ Styles to win the IWA Mid-South Heavyweight Championship in Highland, Indiana. October 23rd, 2005, 2005 if you will, Rhino beats Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship in under six minutes after Rhino had won the 10-man gauntlet match to get that title shot. Obviously from ECW fame, Rhino. Still active today, like a lot of these guys are. 
October 23rd, 2008, TNA Impact from the Hard Rock Casino in Las Vegas. Kurt Angle, Sting, Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner, and Booker T form... What faction do they form in 2008 in TNA Impact? In Sin City? Anyone? McFly, Bueller, as I always say. All you youngsters out there. The Main Event Mafia, if you remember that. That's right, The Main Event Mafia, October 23rd, 2008, TNA Impact. What a faction. Kurt Angle, Sting, Nash, Scott Steiner, Booker T. Pretty impressive, if you know what I'm talking about. And I think that you do. Give me a little itchy on the neck. October 23rd, Tokyo, Japan. Hayabusa is paralyzed following a botched lion salt during a frontier martial arts event. And that's what I talk about with everyone and how they're doing things today and these last several years, this last decade here into 2023, going into 2024. The risks, whether it's Darby Allen and, and AEW or Edge or Christian or the Hardy Boys, what the guys do in WWE, which isn't as high risk, but you can still throw in pros like Rey Mysterio and so on and so forth. Unnecessary fucking bumps and risks, especially in AEW and the independent scenes. Everybody's got to get their stuff in. Everyone's got to get their spots in. Everyone's got to do their maneuvers. And by the time you reach my age, which I'm coming up on 60 this week, even earlier, by the time you guys who are in your 20s right now get to your late 30s and early 40s, I pray to the Lord, our Lord and Savior, that you guys aren't going to be crippled and you're going to be all right. With these unnecessary dives and high-flying stuff, Sammy Guevara, even in the independence, my my good buddies, the youngsters, uh, Kylon King, uh, Dustin Flash Waller, the Haven, Sometimes it's just unnecessary, the risks that you take in all these matches and the independent scenes for, what, 50 bucks, 100 bucks if you're lucky? And even if you sign a big contract, is it worth the money? Because the fans in this day and age want more, more, more fire tables. We already went through that era. We were lucky to survive. Take it from someone who knows. I'm telling you. Perfect example. I don't have to bring up just recently, like Big E, or the late great Draws, many, many other uh, stars, and even jobbers, even to Hayabusa. Doesn't make sense, fans. Keep it safe. Keep it simple, stupid. Less is more. October 23rd, 2008. WWE Smackdown in Omaha, Nebraska. The Dudley Boys beat the Hardy Boys to win the WCW Tag Team Championship. Now remember at this time, the WWF owned WCW. You guys know the history from over 20 years ago. The Dudleys are the only duo to win the WWF, WCW, and ECW Tag Team titles. And they were also, for a tidbit of information here, and this is why I do my due diligence and why you're here, they were the last team to hold the WCW Tag Team titles. The titles were unified with the WWE Tag Team titles just weeks later at Survivor Series. Guys, know your history. That's why you come here for the history. October 23rd, 2009, NWA TNA TV tapings, which now in 2023, just past weekend, was just brought back. Impact TNA now. And of course, I just want to acknowledge the great tribute by Mike Tanay, the great ring announcer, in regards to also one heck of a guy and a good announcer in his own right, the late, great Don West. In those TV tapings in Nashville in 2009, AJ Styles beats Six Pac for, to win the NWA X Division Championship, which was pretty wild back in the day in TNA, NWA, whatever you want to call it. 
uh, the X Division Championship for AJ Styles over X Pac, the one, two, three kid, the lightning kid. Fast forward into the time machine, October 23rd, 2012. TNA presents Bound for Glory from the Impact Zone at Universal Studios. And Universal Studios at that time refused to charge anybody for tickets because you got free tapings down there, free admittance to the NWA TNA TV tapings when they were filming at Universal. Once you got into the park, they refused to charge. It was the first TNA event in the Impact Zone era where priority seating was offered. Universal, as I just said, prohibited charging admission for shows on their property. Bet you guys didn't know that. Just as tidbit of information here on October 23rd, this date in history, 2012. Let's also go to fast forward to October 23rd, 2017. UFC 121. And why is this pertinent, GOC? Because Cain Velasquez in a first round TKO over the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. Now we know when Lesnar went on to become the UFC heavyweight champion and demolish everybody in his path from Frank Mir on down to Cain Velasquez and so on and so forth. But on this date, 2017, which really wasn't that long ago, UFC 121, Velasquez did beat Brock Lesnar, who to me is one of the uh, greatest competitors, athletes, fighters, and all the sports combined from um, collegiate wrestling uh, to uh, his attempts at pro football to conquering uh, the world of professional wrestling and conquering the UFC. Uh, I just want to be able to go through these notes and make sure that I got everything in just about chronological order. Celebrating today's birth dates and birthdays, October 23rd, 1987, Leah Van Dale was born, a.k.a. Carmella from the WWE. Now, you guys know that Carmella was a Laker girl, also a New England Patriots cheerleader. Her father was a WWF jobber, Paul Van Dale, for those of you that don't know. So a big shout out and happy birthday to Carmella. And as we uh, said, born in 1966, but passing away on this date, October 23rd in 2000, the late, great Rodney Anawai Yokozuna. Peheo Melihini Kane, Pupule Wiki Wiki. Mahalo and Aloha. So uh, before we get out of here, and the guys, uh, thanks for being here. I had a lot of news and notes, and we had to jump all over the place. I just want to make sure that I got everything in here because I had to go back and double check and then recheck here on today in pro wrestling history. And I believe, as going through my several pages of notes, that I got it done in a little over a half an hour. Again, I can't thank you fans enough for being here. This means a lot to me. So continue to come back, like, share, subscribe. Let's build this channel. Let's build this platform. We don't know how much time we have left. So let's enjoy it while we're here. Stay positive. Stay in faith. I love you all. God bless.